Gimme head with hair, long beautiful hair, shining, gleaming, steaming, flax and wax. No hair, short hair, long hair, crazy hair, funky hair, cool hair, not so cool hair. All of these different things that we do with our hair that's pretty much just dead stuff hanging off of our bodies. All mammals, and humans are mammals, have hair. In fact, humans have body hair pretty much all over our body, except a few places which we've discussed in previous videos and we'll discuss in future videos. Interestingly, we as humans have about the same amount of hair by square inch, that's little parts of our body, all over our body, we have pretty much the same amount of hair in our body that the primates do. Now the difference between primates and humans as far as hair goes is our hair isn't as thick, isn't as coarse, isn't as dark. Now this of course assumes that you're not Robin Williams. But we don't have the thick, the dark hair that the primates do. But pound for pound, square inch for square inch, we have about as much hair as our primate relatives. Humans lose about 20 to 100 hairs per day. You're constantly shedding hair. There are three types of hairs that we need to be aware of. There is Lunguno. It's almost like Menudo. Remember that old Mexican rock group that Ricky Martin was in? Well, Menudo, except it's not Menudo, it's Laguno. This is the hair that's found on the fetuses during development. While the baby's in the womb, they have this peach fuzz all over their body. This peach fuzz, peach fuzz should recede by the time the baby is born. There might, however, be some little fuzziness around the ears and some in the face. It just makes me look so cute. But anyways, that's Laguno. We also have vellus hair. Vellus hair is the difference between the hair in my head and the hair, let's say, I'm not a good example for it, but if you're a female out there, you might have a lighter hair on your arms. This is the vellus hair. It's shorter, finer, not as dark, unpigmented. Much more observable, observable in women and children. The other type of hair is the terminal hair. The terminal hair is the stuff that you have on top of your head. It's darker, it's coarser, it's usually pigmented. Let's take a look at the composition of hair. First of all, take a look at this picture. This is a picture of a rhino. Notice the nose. Notice that horn coming out of the nose. That horn is made of hair. Yeah, hair. Hair is basically epithelial cells that are characterized dead and pushed together. What you see here is all dead hair. The living hair is actually underneath the skin. That is where the hair comes from, at least the living part. Part of the integumentary system that is responsible for growing hair is known as hair follicles. Let's take a look really quick at a picture of a hair follicle. We need to be aware of the hair shaft. It's a superficial portion of the hair which projects from the skin. This is the part that you see. The hair root is the portion of the hair that's alive. It's found in or underneath the dermis. It penetrates the dermis and sometimes goes into the subcutaneous layer. At the base of each hair follicle is in a large structure known as the bulb. The hair root is the part that's alive. Hair grows over the entire body except the following areas that you need to be aware of. It does not grow in the palms of the hand. Insert funny joke there. It does not grow on the soles of the feet. It does not grow in some areas of the genitalia, mucosal membrane of the lips, the navel, that's your belly button, and eyelids. The primary function of hair is protection. Let's look at hair color. Hair color varies among individuals. Now we're talking about natural hair color, not the stuff you get out of a bottle or the hair salon. Dark hair is dark because of a brownish black pigment. More is released into the hair. If you have light hair, blonde or red, you have more of the reddish yellow pigment. If you have gray hair, then you have a mix of pigmented as well as unpigmented hair. So it's a mix between that which is pigmented and that which is not being pigmented anymore. The erector pili muscles. These are smooth muscles attached to the hair. They come from the dermis to the sides of the hair follicles. The purpose of the erector pili muscles is to pull the hair up. Now this doesn't have much of a function in humans, however in animals, let's say a cat, if you've ever scared a cat, which is always fun, um, if you've ever scared a cat, their hair gets big. They go, ooh, I'm going to make myself look big, and they try to scare off things that might hurt them. 
the erector pili muscles are what pulls that hair up. So it might be involved in a stress reaction. If you get stressed, if you get frightened, the hair might stand up. Also, something that the erector pili muscles do is they'll pull the hair up in order to help keep the critter uh, warm. So if you're a cat or you're a dog and you have a lot of fur and it's cold outside, the more of a buffer you can get, the more hair you can pull up that keeps the wind and the cold from getting to the skin, the more hot air you can trap within the fur. So in animals, in, in dogs and cats and other furry, furry animals, the erector pili muscle serves a very important purpose because it keeps the animal warmer. Now, in humans, not so much. If you were to go, let's say, on a very cold day or walk into a freezer, you might get goosebumps. That's your skin all kind of popping up. That's the erector pili muscles working. They pull the skin tight and raise the hair. The purpose, again, of that is to try to keep you warm.